cells are life. A living cell, whether from a skin or another tissue, may divide and replicate itself. This is a fundamental attribute of life. Inside each cell are the complete instructions for the development of an individual of the species from which the cell was derived. Why this is central to the subject of conservation of endangered species and de-extinction is, is my main topic today. We know that small populations are more vulnerable to extinction due to small numbers, fragmented populations, lost or compromised habitat, and changes in the environment. This process, which is a kind of a positive feedback loop, is called the extinction vortex. Small population vulnerability may be due to inbreeding, loss of genetic diversity, when gene pools are reduced to gene puddles. These populations may be rescued from extinction through the introduction of new individuals bringing additional genetic diversity. Genetic rescue has been demonstrated numerous times, most famously with the Florida panther and Scandinavian wolves. Instances of genetic rescue like these, though, are invol involve what may be considered uh, artificial immigrations in which one or a few individuals are incorporated into the breeding population of the critically endangered species, resulting in the production of new offspring that uh, thrive and help grow the population in numbers. But genetic rescue can be also be accomplished through the use of uh, advanced reproductive technologies. For the black-footed ferret, the genetic contributions of some individuals could only uh, be obtained through the use of artificial insemination, even using banked semen. It will take genetic resources to accomplish genetic rescue. This is a main point. Cells are an essential element of advanced reproductive technologies, such as cloning, and are a potent resource for genetic rescue. These cells are from an extinct species. All that is left in living form of this species are the cells in the frozen zoo. I'll come back to this later. At the San Diego Zoo Institute for Conservation Research, we've been saving cells for 35 years. Our collection is the most extensive, best characterized, and most utilized collection of its kind. The frozen zoo has contributed to many hundreds of scientific studies, such as naming new species, helping describe the tree of life, and managing populations to maintain genetic variation. The frozen zoo is also called upon to address biomedical questions that contribute to understanding human biology and medicine. Many health investigators have received samples from the frozen zoo. What's in the frozen zoo? Mammals constitute the majority of species, but the species of birds and reptiles are the most rapidly growing component. We've even added endangered amphibians to the frozen zoo. This collection is enhanced by the documentation and associated data that come with it, the source of the individual and its uh, chromosomal makeup are routinely produced. We are adding DNA barcodes to these data now. Whole genome sequencing studies are being advanced with samples from the frozen zoo. With the launching of comprehensive comparative genome projects, such as Genome 10K, new opportunities become possible with the rapid advancements in genome sequencing technology. Some of the most exciting studies in evolutionary biology are now underway with vast amounts of data that are becoming publicly available that will reveal the genetic basis for the remarkable evolutionary changes that have produced all of the vertebrates. The frozen zoo is an active participant in this. Since Dolly, and more recently with stem cell technology, the development of an individual mammal from the single cell stage through the embryo, the fetus, and the neonate has become possible. 
the frozen zoo has contributed to the application of this technology for endangered species conservation. What are the implications of these discoveries for the conservation of endangered, doomed, and extinct species? That is the exciting topic of today's gathering. It's amazing to be asking that question, and it's timely that we are doing it and we should be doing it. For some species that yet survive, but which are critically endangered, which have a guarded prognosis due to genetic impoverishment and the other uh, factors that produce the extinction vortex, advanced genetic and reproductive technologies may offer the only hope to prevent their extinction. One remarkable case for consideration is the northern white rhinoceros. There are two kinds of white rhino, once thought to be subspecies, but now considered to be separate species. Genetic studies confirm their divergence, but the exact amount of their differentiation isn't really well described. However, they live in different habitats and separate geographic locations and have evolved separately for some time. But the northern white rhinoceros is now a doomed species doomed because of its small population effects. There are only seven living individuals, only four of which are potential breeders. For these, the available pairings are between father and daughter, father and granddaughter, a brother and half-sister, and uncle and niece. But we have in the frozen zoo cells of these four individuals that are reproductively capable, two additional individuals, that are related, and five unrelated individuals. This is arguably a sufficient gene pool to rescue the species. Only limited efforts are underway to explore the potential of advanced genetic and reproductive technologies to bring back the northern white rhinoceros. But the development of stem cells from adult cells in the frozen zoo is one of these efforts underway. This involves the formation of induced pluripotent stem cells. This slide shows reprogrammed cells with altered growth characteristics, characteristic of stem cells. This work sets the stage for future developments. These beautiful images here taken by Dr. Ben Nunn in the Loring Lab at Scripps Research Institute show that reprogrammed cells have the properties expected of stem cells. Induced pluripotent stem cells can be the conduit for rescuing genetic variation. These cells in other species have produced sperm and eggs, so they can be a genetic conduit. It seems to me we're in a race. If this technology is developed, it offers the only way we can imagine to save the northern white rhinoceros from extinction. And there are species that have gone extinct but might have been saved if appropriate samples were collected and preserved. There are recently extinct species for which frozen cell cultures have been saved. We've heard about the Bucardo. The Po'o'uli from Maui and the Hawaiian Islands is another. The cells I showed earlier are from the last individual of this species. The experiences of working at the boundary of extinction and survival have reinforced our conviction of the importance that expanded efforts to bank cells in multiple centers around the world be undertaken. The way to save species is in their habitats with functional ecosystems. And yet, there are ever more species that are at the brink of extinction entering the vortex. This is a challenge of our times and one that we need to address with a great deal of urgency. Thank you. Thank you.